And welcome to our Lenten Midweek Music and the Word. And we're doing something special each week. And today we are commemorating the music of one of the world's great composers of classical and sacred music, Johann Sebastian Bach, uh, who was born on the 21st of March, 1685. I remember growing up uh, around this time each year, going to a church in Washington, D.C., where they would have around Bach's birthday every year, something they called a Bach Marathon, where different organists would come in and play the majestic pipe organ of this great church. And um, I would always go with my mother and with my grandmother, and even as a, a boy would enjoy being in that sacred space and listening to the magnificent music that God had inspired through the composer Johann Sebastian Bach. Remembering that memory of music in a sacred space and sharing that with my mom and with my grandmother reminds me of when Paul wrote to Timothy, I am reminded of your sincere faith 
a faith that lived first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. So we begin with these words from 2 Timothy chapter 1, which remind us of the legacy of faith. And so let's thank God for those who have imparted the faith to us, who've inspired us to know God and to love God. For many of us, it was our mothers, our grandmothers, our fathers, our grandfathers, other mentors in our lives. May these words also remind us to be encouraged. God did not give us a spirit of cowardice or a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love and of power, of a sound mind of self-discipline. And in a special way, may you be encouraged today as you're joining us for this online presentation. And particularly for those of you who may be in ministry, elders or pastors, May you be encouraged with the reminder that God wants to rekindle in you the gift of faith that you received in the laying on of hands. So may we be blessed by this music and by God's word today.
that mighty music. A mighty fortress is our God is a setting that, that Bach arranged based on the Lutheran hymn that was penned by Martin Luther based on Psalm 46. Let us hear these words that remind us that God is our mighty fortress. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And so, reflect on these words from Psalm 46. As you hear this beautiful melody played by Karen and Jamal, Hold on to these words, whatever you're going through this day, even as the world around us shakes with fear. Be assured, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of angel armies is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And as you rest in this music, remember that God says, be still. Be still and know that I am God.
Johann Sebastian Bach composed most of his music for the church. He had to, in fact, for so much of his life, compose music for the organ, for choir, each Sunday. And so, so much of the wonderful sacred music we have was inspired by God through the pen of J.S. Bach. And there, there's been some question over the years as to what degree of personal faith Bach had. Was this just a job for him that he worked at a church and had to produce each Sunday? Or was he deeply a man of Christian faith? Well, Bach's personal Bible testifies to the fact that he was moved by Scripture. And the music that he has left is just so permeated with faith that we realize that Bach was inspired by a God whom he truly loved and served. In fact, it's famously known that on each piece of music that Bach penned, he wrote three initials, S-D-G, which stood for Soli Deo Gloria. Those three inscribed letters, S-D-G, Soli Deo Gloria, are a testimony to the fact that Bach was dedicating all of his music solely to the glory of God. That's the spirit that Paul writes about in his letter to the Colossians, chapter 3. Hear these words, Colossians 3, 12 through 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, as you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And as you listen to this next selection, which is a beautiful arrangement, uh, interweaving one of Bach's classical compositions with the familiar hymn, Amazing Grace. Reflect back on these words that Paul writes to the Colossians. And as I just read this one more time, I invite you to hear these words and listen for what particular word God may be having for you today from his word. I pray there will be something in here that God really is communicating directly to you today to hold on to, to treasure, to live out. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another 
And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Happy birthday, Johann Sebastian Bach. On March 21st, 1685, we celebrate he was born. And I'd just like to also give a personal shout out. March 21st is also the birthday, and this year the 90th birthday of my father-in-law, Karen's dad, Hugh Stephen. 
uh, we thank God for you, and uh, he's an amazing man. He's been a dear father to us, a grandfather, um, a friend in Christ. Um, served for decades with Wycliffe Bible translators, and his love for the Lord has been passed down to his family. And we give thanks to God for him. And one of my special memories of my father-in-law was watching him stand with his daughter, my bride, at the back of the church, getting ready to walk down the aisle almost 25 years ago. And the music that was played at our wedding for the processional of the bridal party was this next selection that you'll hear. Bach's setting of the hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. And I'll always remember how full my heart was with thanksgiving. As I saw my bride and her dad, God is so good. And so as you hear this magnificent setting by Bach of Now Thank We All Our God, performed in the magnificent setting of the United States Military Academy in West Point, New York by organist and friend of our church, Craig Williams. Hold on to these words again from the third chapter of Paul's letter to the Colossians. Whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him.